Hey Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here, aka Shagged, with another episode of A Shaggy Duck Live. Thank you guys for checking in for the behind the scenes of what's going on at Shaggy Duck Studio and all the other fun adventures that I've got going on here in the Great Plains of America in Enid, Oklahoma. You guys, don't forget you can listen to the audio podcast on all of the major podcasting apps, or you can go to YouTube dot com slash Curtis Tucker TV and watch me as I wave at you right now and uh, you can watch the podcast there so I appreciate you guys subscribing there I also have a, a patreon go to patreon.com slash shags and so tonight is going to be uh, just kind of a random fun episode I'm going to start out the show uh, playing with some stuff real quick I bought a new toy and it is one of the coolest things. Hopefully the audio, if you're listening to the audio on just the podcast, uh, the quality should be like most excellent. I got a Rode Caster Pro 2. It is a mixer and it is so, and uh, two brand new microphones to go with it, XLR microphones. But um, I'm running the mixer right now off of a USB battery, and so it's portable. I can take it wherever I want to go. It's got a little uh, space uh, slot you can put a chip in, and so I'm recording this podcast to a chip running off a battery, completely uh, unconnected from a computer, and uh, it's pretty cool. And then I could also, if I had some music and some stuff on my phone, I could Bluetooth it to the mixer and add that uh, to the mix. It's also got preset channels where like you can play, you know, I'll have like the beginning and some songs there. Uh, one of the other cool things, uh, it, uh, it's got built in where it will change your voice. And so all I have to do is talk into the microphone and it gives me a whole new voice. So I'm really glad that you guys are here. It's, uh, you know, I probably won't be using these that often, but they're kind of fun to have. So enjoy the show. And as I learn more, as I learn more about this uh, funny mixer, I will uh, let you guys know, but uh, it is uh, really, really cool. Hey, crickets. Uh, I am really enjoying You can even do more, you know, than one sound at a time. So it's going to be fun. Going to have, uh, be able to do some background sounds. And, uh, you know, if I tell a joke, I can do a, a rim shot. Uh, so it's even got uh, kind of like a cough button and everything. But uh, anyway, really cool. I would show you on the YouTube video, but... Uh, my phone in the phone stand there keeps falling over and I'm afraid to touch it and put it back because I've got it set up right now so I am recording the uh, video for youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV and I do have my lapel mic on but on the audio talking into my new Rode podcast uh, microphone so I hope you guys are enjoying the new uh, sound quality on that I hope it's uh, coming out pretty good and you know I'll have to work uh, with that. I probably need to turn it back just a little. It's pretty cool having the mixer right here in front of me and being able to play with the knobs and stuff. But uh, so for tonight's episode, uh, kind of behind the scenes, uh, if you've been listening to me at all or listening to the other podcasts that I do, you know that I'm. Uh, my goal is to write a book. And uh, the book is about me growing up in the 70s and uh, just kind of uh, how exciting it was and, and why I loved the 70s so much. So tonight's episode, I'm going to kind of go over, uh, you know, why I'm uh, going to write the book, kind of what the book is going to be about, uh, the characters that the book is going to be based on, even though the book is not going to be, uh, you know, autobiographical. It's going to be, you know, uh, fiction. And, you know, a lot of the events in the book will be based on things that me and my friends did. But, but I'm just going to give you guys kind of a background on what the book is going to be about. So, so once you listen to this episode, you'll kind of have an idea of, oh, okay, so that's kind of going to be the book, even though I don't know what the 
exact storyline is going to be, but you know the names. I'm going to change the names and and some of that stuff. But uh, so so the reason I'm writing the book, uh, and it's called uh, the banana right now, and I, I'm pretty sure that's what it will be. It's the Banana Seat Squad, and I've also already got you know the Facebook page and website and logo done, and even uh, got a T-shirt design already done. So uh, Banana Seat Squad, and basically it's ba based on me and four of my friends that all lived on a street called West Broadway in the 70s. So a little bit of background. Uh, my family uh, came to Enid, Oklahoma in the 1900s and blah, blah, blah. And then my mom met a guy on the Air Force base here. And uh, because he was Air Force, he got shipped off. And while he was, they were shipped off, um, me and my sister were born in San Antonio, but around 1970, my parents got divorced and my mom moved back to Enid, Oklahoma as a single parent. And so I basically grew up the entire, well, you know, I never saw my dad again after, after 1970. And so grew up as a latchkey kid and, you know, had my whole childhood in Enid, Oklahoma in the 1970s. And so when we moved back, we had uh, lived with my grandma for just a couple months. And then we'd gotten a rent house on what's kind of considered the east side of town. And then quickly, uh, got a rent house across the street from my great grandma and so to save on money and not have to have a babysitter you know when we weren't in school my great grandma could keep an eye on us from the house directly across the street and so the early 70s I grew up in Enid and I lived in that house and so in the 70s in in the neighborhoods basically you hung out with the kids that were in your class and lived, you know, probably within like a four to five block area. And so all of my friends lived within that four to five block area and we all hung out and, um, you know, I had a best friend and, and, and so, you know, again, it was, you know, early. So probably between 70 and 74. And then uh, everything changed for me in 1974 because we moved, and I'm not sure why we moved, but we moved to a bigger house. Uh, basically, it was just down the street, but it was far enough down the street that it kind of put me in a whole different neighborhood. And it was, it was one block away from the elementary school I was going to. So it was the summer before my sixth grade. And again, I had this whole set of friends all through grade school that we had all hung out and we all kind of lived in the same neighborhood. And then in sixth grade, what happened was they had two sixth grade classes and they split all of the students, you know, into the two classes. And for some weird reason, I basically got split from all of the guys that I had hung out with before. And they all ended up in the other sixth grade class. And I was in the... I don't know what you, you wouldn't call it new, but just the other sixth grade class with, um, you know, guys from different parts of the neighborhood. Well, what was interesting is um, three of the guys, well, a lot of the guys that were in my sixth grade class all lived on West Broadway. And I don't know, maybe they, maybe they divided it up by address. I don't know. But so by that time, so we had moved to West Broadway and I lived a block west of the elementary school and uh, immediately met uh, Staten who, so last week's episode, uh, Staten and I recorded on his pontoon boat and talked about uh, he and I meeting and growing up in the 1970s. And so, so I met Staten and he was the kid that had the trampoline and the new kid in town, but the kid in sixth grade. And so basically after that, uh, you know, the beginning of sixth grade and moving over to West Broadway, which basically was the corner of West Broadway and Johnson. And, and I'd lived about four blocks um, south on Johnson when I was hanging out with the other kids. So anyway, so basically a whole new house. I had the whole upstairs to myself. It was a big game room, a bedroom, a bathroom, and a walk-in closet. And I had the whole upstairs to myself and met Staten and he had a trampoline. And then 
Staten lived one block east of the elementary school, and then there was a block in between, and then a block east of him was Brendan, and Brendan lived, Brendan Hedges lived, uh, or he was in our sixth grade as well. So us three all lived on West Broadway. And so because of that, uh, and because we were all in class together, we started hanging out together a little more. And then that, and basically that's when, uh, you know, what I stopped hanging out with the other guys. And within that neighborhood, so Brendan, his parents had bought this mansion and they'd gotten a really good deal. I mean, they weren't like the, you know, mega rich. They were just a regular family that just happened to buy a used mansion that had was being sold at a good price. And on the block that he lived on, there was only two houses because both houses were mansions. And then across the street from his block was the block that we spent almost all of our time playing on. And David Rathbun lived in the middle of that block. And then one more block to the east, on David's side of the street was uh, Jason Gilbo. And so those two were two years younger than us. We, we had started the sixth grade and they had started the fourth grade, but because they lived so close, they kind of hung out and somewhere along the line, somebody had started a game called Musculins and there's a full episode, well, almost a full episode on us playing this game called Musculins in the summer uh, but that's what kind of drew us all together at first was playing musculins. And so so we, so we, there was basically the five of us were the core. We, we basically were out every weekend and then every night in the summer we were either playing musculins or murder in the dark or, uh, you know, pulling pranks on people. But we would all meet up either on our skateboards or our banana, banana seat bikes. Uh, you know, during the day we would ride, you know, all across town where our parents didn't know where we were. We would go into pawn shops and buy uh, throw Chinese throwing stars, and we'd buy comic books, and and then we'd we'd go down into the tunnels, the the water drainage tunnels under parts of the city, and uh, you know, find our way through these tunnels and and stuff like that. And so it was, it's those things that we did and those memories that, um, and just the summertime, you know, in Eden, Oklahoma, we had the, the uh, uh, I don't want to say locusts, it, around here we called them locusts, but they were cicada, they're cicadas, and for some reason people in Oklahoma uh, call them locusts when they're actually cicadas, but, so they're screeching and screaming in the summer, we've got the, the sweltering summer, we've got a, a creek, called Boggy Creek, where we uh, chased tadpoles and caught salamanders and turtles, and and it was that time period and, and all of that that I think back on and I think, man, you know, it was such a cool time. And again, we were riding our banana seat bikes all over town with no supervision. Our parents, you know, we no phones and so we couldn't really call our parents and tell them where we were So and they didn't really worry about us. And so it was just a, a really, really great time. Uh, to grow up, and so in 1974, that's when I start, uh, entered sixth grade, uh, became best friends with State, and we've been best friends ever since, and then also became friends with Brendan, and then the three of us uh, started hanging out with the other two, uh, David and Jason. And so that went on, so we went all through the, the 1974, uh, and then you know the end of the school year was in 75, and so the summer of 75 was, was the big summer when all that started. We started playing the games and all of that. And then, so, so the summer of 75 was a great summer. And then um, the next year, Staten, Brendan and I went, we, we had to go to, to, at the time it was called junior high, which a lot of people call middle school. And so we went off to a brand new school, but we still stayed in contact with Jason and David. And so all through, and you know, and we didn't know, you know, a whole lot of people in junior high yet. So we were still hanging out with the guys that we had hung out with in grade school. And so then the next summer would have been the summer of 76. And um, again, it was another great summer uh, of fun hanging out with those guys. And then we went on to eighth grade. And so the end of eighth grade, we would have gra we would have gotten out of eighth grade and it would have been the summer of 1977. Now, by the summer of 77, 
I think we had probably started hanging out less with, I think Brendan, I think Brendan Hedges had moved to California by that time and we were hanging out less and less because, you know, we were in different schools with uh, uh, Jason and David, but because there were so many cool things that went on in 1977 and it was such a, a great year, I'm going to set my book in the year, the summer of 1977, when actually I think a lot of what we did happens in, happened in the summer of 1976 and 1975. And so, so a lot of the stuff uh, that's going to be in the book actually happened over, you know, probably three summers, but I'm combining them all into this one magical summer of uh, 1977. There's, there's some songs I want to include. There's some some things and it just just everything that uh, just so many good things went on in 1977 and so that's why you know again it's not going to be an exact you know the book is not exactly what happened with us so you know I'm taking some liberties with some dates and and some names and some events and and things like that so so the book is going to be set in the summer of 1977 and just all of the adventures that we had that summer, like I say, playing uh, the outdoor games, staying out till, basically you'd stay out uh, till the street light came on and then uh, instead of going home, you'd run in on a landline and you'd call your parents and you'd say, hey, uh, can I spend the night? And then you'd end up spending the night so you didn't have to go home. And so we spent, I mean, gosh, you know, probably spent more nights together with each other than we did uh, at home during those summers. And I know I, I spent, I'd spend in the summer, you know, probably four or five nights in a row at Staten's house or, or, you know, with a couple of nights maybe with him spending the night at my house. And so, um, so that's going to be the main thrust of the book. And then, you know, I do this 70s Buzz podcast with Todd, and the thing about Todd is Todd kind of came into the picture, uh, I think, around 77, 78, and so um, he was just at the end of when we were wrapping up that five-guy friendship and all the things that we did, and then, um, and so basically by our ninth grade year in junior high was when we, and it was towards the end of the year, uh, we started hanging out with Todd, and so basically, and then so the summer of 79 was, you know, we were getting rid of our banana seat bikes, and we had stripped them down and painted them and turned them into Huffy bikes, and, um, and you know, we knew we were, you know, it wasn't going to be too far away that we were going to be driving anyway, so, so I, I want to incorporate, because, so, so Todd was in on some of the stuff that we did, but it wasn't like really the stuff we did with tho that gang of five. But I still want to incorporate some of the stories that, that we did with Todd. So it's going to be one of the characters are going to kind of be a merge of one of, uh, you know, basically a merge of two characters. And so some of the stories are going to be based on some things that, you know, we did with Todd and and all that, but basically, it's it's the story of five guys growing up in Enid, Oklahoma, in the '70s, uh, spending a lot of time on their banana seat bikes, but knowing that uh, the summer of 1977. Uh, I think the way that I'm going to set it up is the three older kids are going to be going off to junior high, and so, or or maybe they've been in junior high for one year, but basically, they realize that it's going to be the last summer that they're probably ever going to be riding banana seat bikes. And uh, so I think a lot of the story is going to be based on the banana seat squad is, is what is kind of a club that all of the, these five came up with. And to be in the squad, they came up with a set of, you know, adventures or dares or things that you had to do to get into the squad. And so part of the story of the book will be everybody having to go through those different uh, things to get into the squad. So uh, a lot of a lot of the things uh, that are going to be required. I think I, I've got a list of like 22 uh, different things that they're going to have to do throughout the summer to get 
into the, onto the squad, and you know at least you know over fifty percent of them are actually things that we actually did. You know, like streaking on a really busy street. You know, streaking across uh, West Broadway, and all you know, just different things like that. And so I'll c incorporate all of that into there. And and I'm wanting, you know, I'm really into Stranger Things right now, and and then the movie Super Eight came out a while back, and I really like those movies, but I. I'm trying to avoid the unbelievable, which is the, you know, the alien, the, the, the upside down world. So in my story, I want to keep it more, you know, based on things that actually might have happened. And so we did have a murder of a, a young boy in the 1970s. Um, and so I don't know if I'm going to uh, incorporate that or the disappearance of one of our friends, but there's gonna I'm gonna try to tie in some type of a mystery or something that we're trying to solve or an, you know a, there's gonna be the little adventures, but that's gonna be surrounded by the big adventure. And so uh, so that so that's why I haven't gotten real far on the book yet because I've got to decide on what. What is going to be that plot? What's what's going to be the hook of the book? You know, I'm going to incorporate a ton of uh, 1970s references and you know things that we that we played with that we had in our rooms, uh, songs that we listened to. You know, it's going to be it's going to bring back tons and tons of memories of the 70s, and and that's why I'm writing it. Uh, not only to you know as a memory of the 70s, you know, so it's written down and people aren't, you know, won't forget, but um, just to bring up that nostalgia for the people that grew up in the 70s and reminders, and that's why we do the 70s Buzz podcast. Um, that's why I, you know, I've been blogging about the 70s uh, since way back in the early 2000s, and I had started a podcast even before Todd and I did one, so I've always had a passion about, you know, trying to relive uh, you know those times in the 70s but just to record them so so people you know don't forget and and the the intent of writing the book is to be able to have the book turned into a screenplay and then have the screenplay 100% turned into a movie so the whole the sole purpose of writing the book is to eventually have a movie made and you know the movie I want to be kind of like a mix of Goonies and Stand By Me with just a little bit of maybe not that extreme but Lost Boys or Stranger Things you know just I just I just want there to be you know a bigger plot going on or something needing to be solved or resolved uh, and as soon as I get that, as soon as I m make the final decision on that, then the book will will get to get to go. And so, so the book is based on us five, and uh, you guys pretty much know, pretty much know my backstory. Um, you know, I uh, went on to Enid High School and graduated in 1981. Uh, went off to college. Uh, I'm the only one out of the five that actually moved back to Enid. So so not only did I move back to Enid, but I still, I'm the only one that lives in Enid. So, uh, you know, I'm here with all the memories. I get to drive down West Broadway every day and look at the houses and the grass and the yards and the garden hoses and the fences that we jumped. You know, I get to see all that every day. I get to relive those memories every time I drive down West Broadway. And so I guess, you know, that's why it's kind of left up to me to be the one to uh, write the book and, and bring up all the memories. And I'm the one that is kind of keeping everybody, those five, connected, although we're, we haven't all been connected. And so, so okay, so, so that was my story. And then again, me and Staten uh, were best friends. So Staten uh, went to uh, part of college uh, in Enid and then his parents sold their house and moved down to South Texas, so Staten transferred down to uh, North Texas State and left Enid, and then he never moved back, and so he's he's been gone from Enid other than to come up for reunions and to see me, but again, he and I stayed best friends, and so, you know, we see each other, you know, two or three times a year uh, doing something, and so he went on to uh, graduate 
Uh, and then I believe he got his master's and got into accounting and now he's a CFO, uh, still working. My dog is, uh, hang on, looking, making sure I don't have a mouse in here that, uh, that uh, Mr. Saucy Pants is going after because he just jumped really quick, but probably just, hopefully just a bug. Um, he is looking, so pardon the interruption. So anyway, so Staten, um, uh, and you know, so then I, you know, married with kids, Staten got married with kids. Uh, again, he and I uh, stayed pretty close. You heard him on the last episode. And then the, uh, the third part of, the, you know, the guys that were the same age, Brendan, now in junior high, Brendan's parents packed up and they moved to California and so Brendan moved to California with them, and he finished uh, school, high school, in California, in I believe uh, either in Chico or around Chico, California. And he had aspirations to become a, a screenwriter or a director, or movie producer, you know, back when he was in Enid. And so you know, it was a great deal for him to go out there and do that. And his his brother is the famous Michael Hedges, uh, the guitarist. Uh, won a Grammy, and uh, so, so, but the thing was, once Brendan left, um, we pretty much lost contact. It, you know, of course, it was before social media and all that, and I think he might have come back to town maybe once or twice, and we saw him, but not for very long, and then there was rumors that he was living in a ranch, writing a book, and nobody had heard from him, so decades and decades went by, and we never, we never heard from Brendan. And uh, then uh, Jason and David were two years younger. So they graduated in 83, and I believe both went off to college. David joined the Navy. Um, Jason uh, went, graduated, and I believe, uh, and he became a youth minister, and I believe eventually became a uh, full-time minister of, of, you know, different churches and moved, you know, I think he was living in, down in the Oklahoma City area, got married, uh, had kids, but we um, lost contact with him as well, and then uh, David, so David Rathbun uh, is the only one that I have not been in some type of contact with uh, basically since way back then, and um, he does not get on social media at all, which is, you know, one reason. Oh, my dog's eating something. Graham, what are you eating? Uh, I think it's a bug. Uh, uh, anyway, okay, so so David, so even as of today, um, have not been in contact with David. Jason has, and so um, he just doesn't like the social media thing and uh, just kind of is off uh, on his own. So, so because of social media and Facebook, I started to reconnect with, finally reconnected with Brendan, and then finally reconnected with Jason. And Brendan came to town, and I invited him over, and so we would hang out a little bit every time he came to town. And he would be, he would come to Enid for different uh, things, either reunions or with his sister or to bring his mom back and things like that. So, so Brendan and I, Brendan and I uh, reconnected and we've stayed in touch and he is trying to break into, you know, uh, a career of screen, uh, screenplay writing and, and things like that. When he did, you know, go to college and took uh, classes to become a director and things like that. And then Jason left the church and has had different jobs, but he and I uh, stayed connected. And then if I go down to the city sometimes, uh, I'll see him, or if he comes to Enid, uh, we'll get together. And so there was one weekend where Staten and his wife were coming up to Oklahoma City to meet me and my wife, and we were staying at a hotel together and gonna go out and eat and stuff. And I surprised uh, Staten by inviting Jason to come to the dinner that night. And so we all, got to reminisce about old times and uh, so that so so that was the closest we've gotten we got us three together um, I think that's the most we've had together since back you know in the 70s um, I don't think Brendan I'm trying to think if I've been with Brendan and Jason or with Brendan and Staten 
and I don't think I have. So now, so so I've been with Staten and Jason. Um, yeah, and I think that's the most we've gotten together. So it would be great to get us all five, you know, together for some type of. Well, for I'd love to get us all five on a podcast and talk about those times. Uh, that would really help out with some ideas on the book. But uh, I'm not sure I. I I can make that happen, but probably over the phone, I could probably make it happen, except for David. Uh, I'll have to somehow con David into uh, doing it, but uh, maybe one of these days I'll do that. So, so anyway, we, you know, we've all gone different directions. We've all, I mean, you know, our lives today are hugely different, but uh, we've all still got that Enid, Oklahoma background and, uh, so I would love to connect with them. If you're watching me on the video, I'm staring at my, I think he's going around finding bugs. He, hang on one sec. Hey, Graham, what are you eating over there? Mister, come here. What are you eating? Stop eating stuff. You need to lay down and go to sleep. Okay, the fun, uh, the fun of having a mascot right here in the studio with you. He, he was asleep and then he woke up and now he's restless, so. Okay, so that is kind of the, um, the background on the story of the book. It's, it's us five hanging out, uh, you know, constantly. You know, we spent lots of time at Staten's house on the trampoline. We spent tons of time on David's block playing muscolins. We spent time at Jason's house down in his basement uh, playing Murder in the Dark. We had a, a Star Trek club at, State, or at uh, Brennan's house. He had the mansion. We'd spend time on the balcony throwing snowballs and stuff like that, but uh, did a lot of stuff in his yard and around his neighborhood. But the big neighborhood um, didn't spend as much time at, uh, didn't really spend a whole lot of time at my house, even though I had that whole floor uh, to myself. But I was the f house further furthest to the west, uh, and, and I was like one, two, three. I was three blocks or yeah, one, two, three. I was three blocks west of Staten, and Staten was like two blocks uh, west of Brendan. Graham, what are you eating? Stay out of that room. Come here. Come here. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to prevent my dog from eating something he shouldn't. Do not go back in there. Lay down. Go to bed. Lay down. I am so mean and firm. He's going to listen to me uh, and not run off again. So, um, so ah, I lost my spot. Uh, talking about the uh, book growing up. Oh, my house. I don't know why we didn't do as much stuff at my house. Um, but for some reason, I think it was because I was so far down and everybody else, you know, Jason, David, and Brendan all live within kind of a block of each other. And so that was kind of the... The place. Oh, and on David's block, there was a church on the end of the block, and there was hardly ever anybody there. And so that was the the space that we, you know, we skateboarded and jumped around in the front of the church. And then when we played musclins, it was the big building that we ran around and hid. And um, and so and then at the very east end of where where basically where Broad, West Broadway ran into a very busy street. Um, there was a McDonald's, and so, you know, back in that day, you could get uh, hamburger and french fries for like 75 cents. So we'd go down there and get what we called one-bite burgers, which were the, the regular burgers, and we'd shove them in our mouth and try to eat them in one bite. But And then there was another church between the McDonald's and Brendan's house, and uh, we used that lawn to play Kill the Man with the Ball a lot. So there was, it just there was just a lot more... I think places to do things down at their end of West Broadway and so we did not spend now as we got older and started throwing water balloons and eggs and things we did more of that down at my end of the street but we were older uh, at that point and not hanging out as a as a group so much together so so um, Banana Seat Squad is going to be about us five uh, growing up in Enid and all of the adventures that we went on and then um, the adventures that we have to come up with to become a part of the squad. Now, if I ever do write 
uh, a second book, it would be those five characters that all become part of the Banana Seat Squad, and then it would be it would move on to the fall, and it would be more of a fall Halloween book of us building that haunted maze because that was just as big a part of of what we did. So so the banana the original the first book is not gonna it's basically all gonna happen in the summer of seventy seven. You know at the end of the summer when we're ready to go to school you know that's gonna be the end of the book. So the second book would be. Uh, going into that fall and building the haunted maze and maybe some story centered around that. Um, so I could see myself, you know, so it would only be two two stories. I, I don't, I wouldn't do a trilogy or any of that, but, uh, you know, the main purpose is to get the first book written and talk about the summers because, you know, in the 70s, they were so carefree, you know, you were sitting under the streetlight telling ghost stories and, um, you know, snacking on a space food stick and listening to Boston on the radio. It just, it was just such a cool time. So, um, so you guys keep after me. You guys keep reminding me um, to get busy. Again, as soon as I get the plot kind of the idea down, um, and Staten and I talked a little bit about it and he gave me some ideas. Um, that I may run with. And so once I get that going, uh, I will get a lot of the book um, going and, and get that sucker written. And uh, it's not going to be, you know, something that's going to be finished, you know, super quick, but hopefully once I get going, um, I can get that written. So what else um, before I wrap this episode up? Um, oh, just uh, so Enid, Oklahoma, you know, uh, I like always like the idea of uh, Stephen King when he writes his books. He, you know, a lot of them are centered around Maine and the the town that he lived in. And so, so the stories in Banana Seat Squad will take place in Enid, Oklahoma. Uh, in the '70s, I would say we were probably a town of, you know, thirty-five to forty-five thousand somewhere in there. And uh, you know, the economy around here was based on a lot on oil. Uh, agriculture, which was wheat, um, cattle, and then the Air Force Base. And so, you know, had a lot of different things bringing in a lot of money and, you know, just a lot of uh, economic upside to Enid, Oklahoma. Now, when Enid was built, it was basically started in the downtown. It, well, you know, we, we had the land run and people set up stakes and, and they built houses here and there. But Basically, the town pretty much started um, in the downtown area, and so we've always had a really cool downtown square, just kind of like the one, you know, one that you would imagine if somebody told you about, you know, old brick buildings uh, in basically, you know, a courthouse with the, the, the county courthouse in the middle, and uh, then all these buildings around, and so really a really cool downtown. And our, our city is basically, divided so the 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 area in the houses to the east of downtown were smaller houses and not as much commercial uh, things going on and so so it's it's called the east side which you know not as much money on the east side and the west side was where they started building bigger houses and new neighborhoods and you know kind of winding neighborhoods not just block after block and then all the new schools were built on the west side and uh, a lot of restaurants started popping up on the west side and then eventually uh, for a period of time in the 80s uh, after the oil bust um, Enid had built a mall way out west, and the mall had killed the downtown area, and so uh, so basically the the west side um, was you know the more affluent and uh, had a lot more money, and so basically um, you know from the dividing line of of the downtown, you know if you went west, it was going to be you know more shopping, more restaurants, bigger, better houses. And, but, you know, it kind of, you know, there, there was the, like the old section of the west side and the further west you went, it got newer and newer and newer. Basically, our neighborhood and centered there around West Broadway, we were like kind of the old part of the new part. And so, 
Um, you know, like I say, uh, Brendan lived in a mansion, so there were some mansions there from way back in the day, but and just the neighborhoods were full of really cool bungalow houses, but then a bungalow might be next to a really cool three-story house, and so it was a, a mix of a whole bunch of different houses. It wasn't one of those neighborhoods where, you know, almost every house on the block looks the same. Uh, rarely were there I don't think at all were there two houses next to each other that even looked remotely, uh, you know, close to each other. And so, so the area was known as the Waverly uh, area of uh, Enid, Oklahoma. And so that's the area that uh, we grew up, grew up in. And and the and I think I've described it before. West Broadway. The cool thing about West Broadway was at at some point, you know, in the uh, early 1900s. Enid put in a trolley system, and so that's how people got around town. If you didn't have a car or if you just, you know, wanted to get around quick was you rode the trolley. And so the trolley went up and down that area of West Broadway, which caused, when they made Broadway, you know, they had to make it pretty much a five-lane street. So you have the trolley in the middle, which was a lane, and then a double lane on each side. Well, you know, somewhere back in the, I, I don't remember exactly, the 20s, 30s, or wherever, they discontinued the trolley, and so they took out all the trolley tracks and put cement over them, and that left uh, West Broadway pretty much, once they divided it up and put the, the new markings on the street, it became basically a six-lane uh, street and so just a huge wide street so you could park cars on both sides of the street and that would they would take up a lane but then there was still two lanes on each side so if you're cruising down West Broadway and somebody's driving slow you could get into the next the middle lane and pass them and there could be cars over on your right that are parked there and so so that made it a fun street uh, to pull pranks on and to run across, and um, it was just a really cool. The thing was, once once Broadway got to our elementary school, the the track had made a turn and gone down another street, and so by the time West Broadway got to my house, it was just a normal two lane uh, street. Uh, so right there by the grade school is when it went from, you know, it, it basically you're driving down a two lane street and then you hit the elementary school and, and the block after, bam, it's all of a sudden six lanes. And so it just, it's just this really cool. And if you, if you're driving from my house east to go to everybody's house to hang out, you can see what we call the Broadway Tower all the way down to down. You can, you know, you can see all the way downtown to Enid's tallest building, the Broadway Tower, which was right there on West Broadway, um, uh, or was it on East Broadway? I think it was on East Broadway because uh, it was one block east of Grand, which uh, divided the um, east side from the west side. So, so that's basically Enid. Um, Enid has one major high school, Enid High School, which was funneled in by three junior high schools. We had Waller, uh, Emerson, and Longfellow, and then each of those junior highs had probably four, five, or six elementary schools that fed into them. And so basically everybody ended up at Enid High School uh, but because there's a lot of farm areas around Enid, there were, uh, you know, north of Enid, there was a high school called Chisholm, but it was literally made up of all of the farm kids. And then to the east, uh, another school called Pioneer. And so, uh, and then to the south, there was a town called Wacomas. And then um, to the west, there was a school called Drummond and then a mix of other schools. But for all intents and purposes, Enid High was the only you know, high school within, pretty much within the city limits. And so uh, everybody ended up there. And uh, like I say, we all, all, all five of us, while we were Enid, went to McKinley 
elementary school, then we all went on to Waller, um, Brendan moved away, but then all the four remaining of us all graduated from Enid High School. So that's kind of an idea of uh, where the uh, Banana Seat Squad book um, will take place. You can get on Google Maps and go to, uh, you know, go to Enid and go to uh, West Broadway and I lived at, where did I live? I think I lived at 1902 West Broadway, or was it 2002? Uh, 19, I lived at 1902 West Broadway. Staten was like 1523. Uh, White Stucco House, he had a cool, he had a cool house. It looked like a, kind of like a fort that you would see in a Spanish town. You know, it was white stucco and had uh, the roof above the porch was flat and it had a wraparound porch and big stucco square columns. And so uh, 1523 would have been his house. And then a block, uh, really two blocks to the east would have been Brendan's house. I don't, I'm not sure. So if Staten was 1500, Brendan's house would have been like 1320-something. Uh, it's the mansion with the big white columns, and then there's another mansion next to it, which was the Hurleyhe Mansion. But uh, if you want to get on Google Earth and cruise down West Broadway, you'll get to see um, the area where we hung out and played and all that. So, uh, so fun stuff. Anyway, thank you guys for uh, checking in. I'm going to uh, get out of here. Uh, don't be happy. No, no, no applause. Don't, don't be happy that I'm getting out of here. But uh, I'm going to learn more about this really cool mixer so I can uh, improve, you know, on some of the background noises and things like that. It's not really going to help much with the, the video portion of the show, but maybe it will. Um, I really like the fact that I can, you know, if I had some sounds or recordings or even somebody on my phone... I can Bluetooth them into one of the channels on this mixer, and it's a, a one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, channel mixer um, with four headphone. It's just, it's really cool. Uh, you guys can get online and check it out. It's the Rodecaster Pro 2. Um, fairly, fairly expensive, but not super expensive in terms of everything that it does. So. Uh, I will keep you guys updated on uh, things that I learn about it and maybe some of the fun different uh, things that I can do on there. Um, don't forget that I can change my voice at any time that I want to and there's nothing you guys can do about it. Ha 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 Oh my, I'm really going to have a lot of fun with this mixer. So uh, anyway, you guys, thanks for checking in. Don't forget, you can go to YouTube and uh, see me at youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. Please subscribe to the channel there. Somebody go to uh, iTunes and leave me a review of the podcast, A Shaggy Duck Life. I uh, would love to hear your comments. Give me some show ideas. Uh, if you guys are curious about something, uh, you know, something that I've talked about that maybe I haven't addressed enough, let me know and I will do an episode on that. And uh, don't forget about the Patreon. Uh, you get all kinds of cool stickers. I just got some brand new... Um, so I'd done some Shaggy Duck metallic looking round stickers, um, but I just got some non- uh, metallic looking uh, Shaggy Duck stickers. And then I also just got a Shaggy Duck. So I ordered some uh, tie-dye t-shirts. I think I'd posted those on social media. The quality, I love the tie-dye t-shirts. The quality of the Shaggy Duck logo is excellent. It took a lot longer to get them than what they had told me it would. So I'm not real happy. So I'm not sure we're gonna use this company um, we're going to debate it. We'll probably talk about it on uh, Buzzhead Radio or a uh, 70 Buzz podcast. But um, So we could have some really cool tie-dye t-shirts coming. Um, I really do like the Shaggy Duck 
um, tie-dye t-shirt. It turned out really well. So uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that, all the other stuff going on behind the scenes here at Shaggy Duck Studio. You guys, thanks for uh, checking in, and I'm going to get out of here, and I will see you guys soon. See ya!